comments deserve a lecture of their own. We'll be taking a look at how to make a template for comments and how to submit a comment. I'm still working in the single.php file. At the very bottom of our loop, let's call the function comments underscore template. This function will look for a template file called comments.php. Let's create that file now. First, we're going to use a conditional statement and call a function called comments underscore open. Since comments is something built into WordPress, we have to check if comments are enabled for this post. If it is, then we'll display a form. Otherwise, I'm just going to output comments that are closed. I'm going to make this string translatable. You'll notice that I'm using underscore E instead of a double underscore. This is because the underscore E will also output the translated string, where the double underscore function will return the translated string. That's the only difference. So let me quickly create our form and I'll go over what each field does. Alright, so most of this form is just markup and bootstrap. A lot of it doesn't have to do with WordPress. Let's go through it one by one. First is the form tag. We need to set the action and method attributes. The method should be post. The action will be a URL to the wp-comments-post.php file. The simplest way of grabbing this URL is to use a function called site underscore URL parentheses. This function will simply return the site URL. If you pass in a string, it'll append that string to the URL. Make sure to echo this out. If we look at a WordPress installation, then you'll see the wp-comments-post.php file in our root directory. This file will process all comments posted to it. Next, let's take a look at the input fields. The most important part of each input is the name of the field. You must send the author, email, URL, and the comment. We also have this hidden field where we use the dollar sign $post variable. This variable is automatically injected for us into this template. This variable is an object and comes with a few properties we can use. In our case, we just want to use the ID. I provide a link to this global variable in the resources section of this lecture. If you take a look, we have all these properties available. Back to the form, we just create a submit button. Now let's try submitting a comment. If you did everything right, then try submitting a comment and if you don't get any errors, then you're good to go. Now it's time to display the comments. I'm going to create a div with a class of comments wrap. Then I'm going to use a for each loop. WordPress puts all our comments in a handy little variable called dollar sign comments. We're going to loop through each element in this array and refer to it as dollar sign comment. You don't have to worry about tying all this together as WordPress does it for you. I'm going to paste some code in here and then we'll go over what it does. The first function I'm using is called comment underscore author underscore URL. Like previously, WordPress is smart enough to know that you're in a loop and will use the current comment in the loop. Anyway, this function will simply return the URL of the author who made the comment. If this was a guest comment, then this will just return either the site URL or the URL of the post the comment was made on. Next up is the comment underscore author function. This function returns the name of the author or the value inputted in the name field. The comment underscore date function returns a formatted date when the comment was made. Lastly, we use comment underscore text to return the text made by the user. Nothing much to it, honestly. If we refresh our page, then you'll see the comment we made previously appear. That's actually it for our comments and our single template. All the content you see here is completely dynamic and ready to use on a production site. You may be wondering, but what about spam protection? Actually, spam protection is something we can leave to plugin developers. There are actually dozens of plugins available to block spam, so we won't bother adding a built-in system ourselves. It would be a bit overkill.